Wow. So I'm going to start with choosing A Vindication of the Rights of Women by Mary Wollstonecraft. And actually, I didn't read this until I was at university um, when I studied it, which I think was quite unusual at the time. And by that time, I'd read all sorts of other... I'd read things like The, the Feminine Mystique and The Female Eunuch and The Second Sex. But this was a forerunner. It was before feminism had a name. It was before feminism kind of had a movement and she did it all on her own and and that comes out there's this it's quite a jangly book really very rough and full of struggle it's got this notion of a woman all on her own struggling and my goodness she got punished for it she had a really rough time she never got rec recognized for it really so here she stands like a real kind of female hero before feminism was invented but a feminist and in fact she's buried quite near where I live in London and whenever I go running I run up the canal and into St Pancras churchyard and I visit her grave and I say hello to her. She died too young. I would recommend people read anyone who's interested in women's rights, which I hope is everybody. This is, this is one of the places it began, this woman on her own recognising just how difficult it was to be a woman and have an authentic self and kind of stand on your own ground in a world which was so made by men. So come here before you go to all those other great books. So yes, well I bet so many people choose this, but I'm going to choose it as well, because Jane Eyre, I mean I think I read it first, like so many girls, as a teenager, as a young teenager, so I probably read it when I was about 13. And I was bowled over by all of it. I was bowled over by the gothicness of it. I was bowled over by this, that kind of beautiful story which had just been repeated and repeated down the years since she wrote it of a kind of plain and hidden woman being recognised. But above all, it was the voice. And I think, I mean, I was quite a good girl. And when I read it, it was like this voice of passion kind of erupting through the text, this wild voice, this voice of someone who wouldn't be shut up and who was saying, here I am. So I honestly think it changed the way I thought about being a woman, about having a voice, about speaking your mind, about holding your own, about standing firm. And I actually, I read it probably about every year and a half. And since I'm nearly 60, that's lots of times I've read this book. There are whole passages I could speak by heart, I think. Everyone has to read this book because it's, it's like a roller coaster. You start reading it, you can't stop. You're with Jane all the way through her childhood, through her teenage years, into her love story. And yet it's so much more than being romantic. It's like what it is to be kind of lonely and unrecognised in this difficult world and still stand firm and then, and then find happiness. Yes, so Home by Marilyn Robinson and I read this really slowly and I read this word by word and kind of pondered it and I, I think almost that's what she requires Marilyn Robinson. She wants you to really think about the small details of, of life, the kind of fabric of life, what it is to be alive kind of step by step and inch by inch. It's incredibly sad as a book, it's like sadness in its bones, I think, but also very thoughtful and very kind. And in a way, I think what she's asking in this book, which is what she asks in almost everything she writes, is how to lead a good life. And I'd recommend it. <laughs> I'd recommend it because I love it a lot and because it's, it's a kind, thoughtful, incredibly profound book. I mean, she's very religious and I have no religion at all but this book doesn't feel religious in a narrow way it feels religious in a way that everybody like me who has no religion can associate with which is just how we should live. The Awakening by Kate Chopin. Now, I've read this a few times and then I've made sure that my daughters read it as well and in fact my son but what I loved about it was the setting and the sea and the water and the sultriness of it a lot of it set on a beach holiday with this woman who's dissatisfied with her life and her marriage. She has an affair, that's the subject of the book, and then she breaks her whole life up. The first thing she does is she learns through the book how to swim. I mean, actually I love swimming, but learning how to swim for Kate Chopin is just, is learning how 
to be free. It's about a woman not identifying herself by the men around her and breaking free of that. And it does it in it, but it does it in a very erotic way. And the eroticism is partly the eroticism that she finds in her own body, not through someone else, but in herself. And the sea is a metaphor for that. Well, I think lots of people don't know about this book. Um, and it should have found its time. And maybe now is the time where everybody should know about it. So here we are, Ketter Kollwitz, who was a German painter and sculptor. And she lived through the First World War and through the Second World War. And she was a socialist. She was a friend of Rosa Luxemburg's. She lived in Berlin. And her son died in the First World War and her grandson died in the Second World War. And she was also a pacifist. And she painted and made prints of and did sculptures of the, the horrors of war and a depression of hunger. They're all, almost all black and white. And there are lots of self-portraits as well, very unsmiling self-portraits. Going to see them is like being punched in the stomach. They are extremely powerful and full of sorrow. And they're all about women. They're about women left behind by men who go to war, women grieving, women holding dead children or starving children. They're about kind of women enduring. So men go off and are heroic and tragic and women are left behind and they bear the consequences. And they're absolutely just beautiful and she was a very very brave woman I've no idea why she wasn't taken off to a concentration camp because she always stood firm against kind of Nazism and things but she was she survived and she painted and she made art that stands like a kind of testament to female courage and she is fabulous mm -hmm.